Well, let's look at the trends of this outbreak now. And we chat to head of the HIV at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, Dr. Adrian Purin. Uh, and uh, Dr. Purin, good morning once again. And, and let's just uh, take a look at, you know, what we're seeing from these numbers. And, and the question I'm hearing just, you know, on what I'm seeing on social media, what, what people are talking about is looking at where, where we are today, this morning. Does it seem as if our lockdown and our restrictions and all our efforts are working? Well, I think the, the lockdown had certainly achieved a specific objective, and I think the overall sense is that, and I'm sure your listeners are all familiar now, post-Professor uh, Karim, is the r naught or the effective R value. That is the rate of transmission from one infected individual to another. And the idea was, given that the R value is estimated between two and three, can we reduce that and, and reach a value of one or less? And that's really critical. My overall sense is that we did achieve that um, in the lockdown overall, but you can certainly see that there are certain problem areas. I think we discussed that yesterday mm. when we look at events in, for example, um, the Western Cape. Mm. So I think uh, my sense is that we, we certainly have reached that, that particular uh, lower point, but it's really then critical for us to maintain that, if not lower, if at all possible. And it comes back to your clip about you know um, us being responsible and compliant with regard to, to wearing of masks, for example, the physical distancing. Those are all the key aspects that really ensure that that particular R remains as low as possible. We don't expect it to be because we do expect as we um, have greater movement of people, as we spoke about yesterday, that that R naught will certainly um, certainly increase. And I think it's, it's time for us to explore again what the purpose of a lockdown is, because, you know, as people get more frustrated now as they try and get into, you know, uh, get into uh, level three, we, we, uh, level four, we are we, we just over a week and a bit into a level four lockdown. And you can see frustrations continue to build and deepen as well, Doc. I mean, part of the, 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 the reason was for us to, to flatten the curve. That's where we want to go. How far, looking at where we are, can we tell how close or how far away we are from that? I think it's again uh, dependent on the models that you look at and it depends on what sort of activities that, that go into or certain parameters that go into the particular models. So you can certainly have a um, complete and rapid unblocking of the lockdown um, and that will really result in I think a really a rapid rise in, in cases and I think the concern here is the uh, overwhelming of our um, really fragile health system. If the, you know, I, I know that there have been great efforts to try and strengthen the health system, but if we have that occurring, um, then we're going to run into particular mm. problems. So it's really a, what they call a risk-based uh, a approach, in other words. How can we step down this lockdown? You, can we do it sufficiently rapidly enough to really get the economy going without actually overwhelming our particular health system? We've seen the low mortality rates, and that, that's quite interesting. Mm. Um, the MRC as well are looking at the trends of mortality. So you can see that we have a very low death rate. In fact, it's yeah. probably yeah. lower than that if we were to take all the infections into account. We knew who was in infected. And if you look at the trends thus far, we're not seeing an excess of, of mortality overall and within particular age groups, because again, the vulnerable age groups are, are with uh, are greater than, say, 59 and, and above with specific um, co comorbidities. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a clamor for us to um, have that lockdown, because those are the only instruments in a way that we have, and they have a limited use. In other words, it's the, the, the physical lockdown. We don't have a vaccine. We're not mm. going to have a vaccine likely in a long time yet to come. We don't have medications, for example, that are currently really approved. So it's really these particular physical um, elements that we, we talk about, the physical lockdown, to keep people physically distant and and contained, in other words. Mm. And then it's about when you're in those queues, um, when you're at home, this, the etiquette about the mask and so forth, those are the, the only ones that we really have in our possession to really try mm. and see whether we can distribute the, the infection that we're seeing over a period mm. of time out overwhelming our systems. I know, we again, I, we're reiterating certain points, but it's yeah. I know that our, our, our structure of our society is very different. Our base is more around the youth, for example, yeah. so they are, can be infected and recover. And I think that's really critical as well. This is not necessarily a disease that will cause death in a large proportion of, 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 of our society. Yeah. It's really those individuals that have um, underlying comorbidities and in the old age groups that, that, that are worse off 
in other words. Mm. It's not the youth, it's not. Those are the elements where you can have a disease and recover from it quite well. So again, when we think about stigma, I think we should really try and destigmatize this by saying, this is, it's not quite like flu, but we've, we've never stigmatized flu. Yeah. Why are we stigmatizing this particular disease? What is it that's so different that we think that that person is a threat to us? And my sense is when you think about the use of masks, for example, I know, again, we can grade the evidence um, for the use of masks, and it, it looks as if it's moderate to weak about why we should be wearing masks. But the idea is around we are all in this together. How do I protect just not myself, but how do I protect you? And that's really one of the rationales for wearing of the mask. And it isn't yes. a lot to ask. I mean, if you, if you think about just what you're asking people to do, it's not a major thing. It's actually quite simple to do. Put your mask on, wash your hands, and, and when you get out of the house. Doc, we have just um, uh, very little time left. And I just want to know, the, the other thing that is top of mind or people are obsessed with at the moment is when do we get to level three of this lockdown? And I want you to just give us some idea as to what informs that decision. What will inform the council as to... What, would it just be these numbers? Like you say, we're looking at mortality, which, which isn't bad compared to, to anywhere else. Uh, we we're looking at recoveries. We're looking at the rate of infections. But the numbers are just a small part of it. So just a refresher for us on what informs that decision to take it down a level. So I agree with you. It, it's a multifactorial thing. So I think the science certainly informs it. But I think it's also around what is the readiness of our particular society. If we simply release that lockdown, are we going to run into problems, in other words? So it's really critical that workplaces, schools, hospitals are all ready, in a readiness for us to change from level four to, to level three. That, that's the critical thing. If we're there, then the lockdown um, can be, be removed or moved to, to the next level. But it again comes back to our being responsible in order to ensure to show that we are actually ready we can manage this um, and that we can move on. Because I think there's a great clamor in the newspapers and our society mm. for us to move on. All right. Well, uh, we'll continue these discussions and analysis. Thank you very much for your time once again today, Dr. Adrian Purin from the NICD there.